to Spigonk Long, very long nightmare. Welcome to Chronotopia Second Skin. I mean, the game overall is not a nightmare for. <laughs> it's what uh, Kiona supposedly is going to go through. Kiona was drifting unconscious in an ocean of darkness at the border between life and death. At the instigation of the fairy, the, the thread of time had rewinded it by itself. The world had reverted to that fateful moment when everything had turned upside down. The search of time was about to turn its own tide. The dam would not hold much longer. Fus opened the invisible doors. A new cycle could begin. A new choice. Can we, like, stick to what we've chosen? <laughs> <laughs> the princess brutally regained consciousness on her bed, gasping for air. She had the unpleasant sensation that her vital energy had leapt in a body which had stayed inert for too long. The ill-conceived body of a doll. With bulging eyes, her heart still pounding from the dread, she remained perfectly motionless for a handful of minutes, each more interminable than the last. Memories were flowing back to her. Feelings too. Kiona remembered with unparalleled precision the progressive asphyxia that had seized her body. Asphyxia, oh by the way, good game as well. Alone in the darkness of her coffin, Frantically hitting the walls, screaming, begging in the suffocating silence of the wind. Yes, she remembered everything. She remembered that her death down to the very last detail. She doesn't know what happened to the other one, huh? She has no clue whatsoever about that. Wait. Ugh. Do I have... I have time for that as well. I absolutely can allow myself at the moment to update the software on the mobile. Shocked by the unsettling imagery which had etched itself into her retina, the princess broke down in tears. Her sobs immediately alerted Nahima, who was positioned in the room. What is happening, princess? What has happened to you? The mere sight of her friend redoubled her tears. Uh, she had missed her rushing face so much in her darkest hours that she did not dare to believe in her good luck. Disarmed, the confidant rushed to her side and held her in her arms, consoling her the best she could. Oh, princess! It hurts me to see you in such a state. What misfortune could have caused the sweet grief? You seem perfectly calm a bit earlier. This trivial sentence aroused the heiress's suspicion. Still lost between the new reality and her confused memories, she was not quite sure what had happened. A bit earlier? Yeah, exactly what... Uh frame of time are you being brought back to? Mm, I've come to see how you were doing as you were supposed to meet your godmother during the day. Oh, so we are back to... Mm, the night right after she like materialized a little bit and the next day she was supposed to be there fully okay you told me that she had agreed to help us but that we absolutely need to specify how you would be shielded from your father's grip uh you seem into deep meditation until you suddenly started crying have you forgotten already no of course not kuna dried her tears with a blank stare she had indeed rolled back time not she really, but... To the night of her pact with the fairy, more precisely. 
Yet one uncertainty remained. Did it mean that her supposed death was only a bad dream? Or had she been transported by the Godmother powers at the last moment? I mean, she might be moved to a different timeline is all, as we know. So she had been aware of magic's existence. It was as if her bearings had become blurred. Noticing her predicament, Nahima gently enticed her by the hand to the dressing table. You fell asleep on your bed, did you not? I mean, have you not seen where she was sleeping? Oh, come on. I suppose that all the dress that loom over you disturbed your sleep and made you have a bad dream. Was it only a dream? Everything's so real. Nahima took a comb and began doing her hair. No, don't. Don't ruin it. With a soft voice, she caressed her cheek. Dream world follows its own rules, princess. Try to forget those gloomy visions. Yet Hyona could not quit, soothe her still throbbing heart. In this ray, she tried to confess everything. Now he might right, I've already escaped the castle, but things quickly took an unexpected turn. As I promised to a tragic fate, I was promised to a tragic fate, I invoked my godmother. She's the one who saved me with her magical powers, she enabled me to go back in time to this night. I really did die. Oh, come on, princess. It is impossible to turn back the clock even with the powers of a god. The flow of time cannot be stopped. Besides, even that was true. Should I not remember seeing you flee too? No. It could be that the fairy's powers only apply to me. Ooh, I must think you just had a nightmare and are now disoriented, which is quite understandable after such a day. But Nahima, I saw my own death. I cannot ignore such a warning. I... You did not see it. You experienced it. Ah. She! Everything is alright. No matter what you have witnessed, you are no longer there. You are here, inside your castle, with me. You are safe. Is she for? Kyuna submissively obeyed her friend. Hmm. Even though she was still traumatized by the event, nothing good could come out of her panic. Consequently, she tried her hardest to regulate her respiration and restore a semblance of peace. How are you feeling? A lot better. I'm feeling better that you did not change her hairstyle to that... The previous that you changed it into. This is better. I'm glad to hear that. I remain convinced that this sign sent to me. What sign? If this is the case, should you not be glad about it? What do you mean? This experience has assuredly been unpleasant, but if this is a glimpse into your future, then you know how to avoid it. No, I don't. You can correct the mistake that led you to, to your ruin. You must be right, Nahuma. Perhaps I should see this nightmare more as an opportunity rather than a curse. Okay, so basically don't choose the option which requires Nahima's help because that's doomed for failure. See? What's more important is for you to move forward. Reassure the princess recovered her determination and stood up. If the choice she had made last time had led to a disastrous result, she only needed to make another one to erase once and for all the specter of death that was haunting her. Let us call my godmother without further delay. Huh? I'm all... <clears throat> I'm already here. Ka! The two young women flinched upon hearing the fairy's voice as she had once again appeared without warning. The scene had a sense of deja vu. So this is your third form. How impressive. Yeah, Medea, Medea's traits seem to lighten up. Oh, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Anyway, let us get back to the reason of my presence. Speak, love. How can I help you? 
I wonder if she remembers that stuff. I need you to... Oh. We are going straight to that. Ooh. I mean, I guess we could... Try the pretend option, I guess. Yeah. I mean, pretend option. That's what we did already done and failed. Can I click this? No, I can't click this anymore. <laughs> I wonder if this, for example, ends up badly again. If we will be moved back to some completely different choice then. Maybe. Let's see. Flee with the skin as these guys. Godmother, I would like you... Uh... To make me momentarily invisible to everyone's eyes so that I can escape the castle dressed in a donkey skin. Why momentarily? Just ask for being able to turn invisible at any time you want. Why are you making this harder for yourself? <laughs> Thus, I would be free to live without raising suspicion and could seek refugee in a neighboring lord. You know, I feel like. You could have done so many different wishes. Mm, an invisibility spell. Not a terribly complicated request. Really? In that case, may I ask you something else? I cannot make any promise, but to explain. I'll see what I can do. Since I'll be disguised as a peasant, I need to bring with me evidence of my social status. No prince would ac ever accept to receive me solely on the basis of some fine words. This why I would like... Huh. This why I would like to bring my most beautiful clothes along without staining them. And what you think they would think? Oh yeah, she's like a princess because she has clothes? No. Come on, they will think you stole them. Be realistic! Ah, Tooth, I could prove that I'm indeed a princess, because you have clothes. <sighs> dude. Dude. Like, dude. She was supposedly told by some, and probably I would imagine at least, that, like, best freaking teachers or whatever how is she so dumb <laughs> come on they see a peasant with a ridiculously expensive clothes of course they don't think you are a freaking princess or whatever high society they will think you stole them this this is a, another bad ending let's face it we are going straight for it Moreover, the sight of those endowments will surely lift my spirits during my exile, for I am very well aware that it will take some time before this plan comes to fruition. Except you will not. Dude, I'm I'm calling the bad ending here again. Is that all you desire? Yes, godmother. In that case, I have exactly what you need. I can let you have a bottomless chest. I want that. I want that. Thanks to it, you'll be able to store anything you want, and it will follow you wherever you go by passing underground. What? The fairy turned to Kiona with a serious look on her face. In a few nimble gestures, she traced invisible words in the air and the stuff appeared in her hand. Here is a hazel road. When you will need your beautiful clothes, hit the ground with the road and the magic chest will appear. I entrust it to you, so do not lose it. Thank you, Godmother. I'll make sure of that. Uh, thrilled by the prospect of planning her escape, the princess kissed the fairy on the cheek with gratitude. Nakima, again genuinely relieved, could not help but cheer her young mistress. I was teased of you, princess. This is one well conducted plan. <laughs> Nobody will ever suspect that it's you hidden beneath those hideous rags. Let's repair post case. What would you want to take on our trip? 
What do you mean out later? What do you mean out later? What? Hearing those words, Kana froze. The servant did not seem to understand what her flight implied and displayed a pure innocent smile as she was about to prepare to leave with her. Hey. Even though it was breaking her heart to do so, her hair had to hold her enthusiasm. Nahima, I'm sorry, but I must go alone. Slowly the young retainer's face crumpled. Meanwhile, Medea is like, Ooh, I don't want to be a part of that. Was I not supposed to accompany you? Not really. I would love for us to go together, really, I assure you. But think carefully about it. I'm fleeing in the middle of the night. This guy's just a poor press to be sure nobody will recognize me. If you, my lady in waiting, are by my side, the guards will immediately figure out who I am. The mere fact that you disappear at the same time as me will be the glaring proof that you are my accomplice. This is why I had to escape alone. As, as, as long as I will be in exile, we will not be able to see each other. Okay, she actually thought about that. Props. Nahima opened her mouth, ready to retort, but no sound came out. She looked down, helpless before trying to clutch at straws. But princess, will you be able to handle things on your own? I could prove useful in your adventure and my princess will not change the fact that you are on the runner way at home. I know it will be hard, but I must go alone. We hardly have a choice, Nahima. You have to stay here if I want to have a chance to pass unnoticed. But it cannot be! It can be. The servant lowered her eyes, again, as she was looking for arguments. Had she been attentive, Kiona would have noticed that Nahima was anxiously twisting her fingers and that her voice was shaking, yet she did not see anything. Or rather, she chose to stay blind. I'm fine with that. Are going to leave here? After everything we've been through, ha? Huh? After all those years of loyalty? If I was ready to follow you to the end of death, why, princess? The young one was sobbing her eyes full of tears. The heiress could not help but moved. Eh. Nagima usually kept her emotions buried, only showing a raging smile. It was the first time she was seeing her friend like this since the death of her mother. And even back then, she had quickly dried her tears to appear stronger, to show Kiona that she could count on her. On today, the heiress realized that her long-time accomplice was not the infallible girl she thought she knew. This scene deeply disturbed her, but her decision was taken. She could not allow her servant to foil her plan, and she was convinced of her good intentions. She had to find a way to console her. Kiona took on a soft tone of her voice and tried to put a smile back on her face. That is not irrevocable, Nahima. Once I have managed to obtain protection from a lord, you will be able to join me. Truly? Perhaps. <laughs> the servant stared at her mistress with prying eyes. Of course, this is only temporary, I tell you. Perhaps. <laughs> and since I will be out of the woods, my priority will be to send you a letter to tell you where I am and invite you to come see me. Perhaps. <laughs> the premise you're not going to forget your Nahima! The prince flashed a being smile and declared solemnly. I promise you. Perhaps. Oh, you know what? You should... <laughs> no. Oh boy, as we already experienced, promises don't go well in this game. Oh boy. The young Moor immediately stood up straight back to her usual posture and cleared her throat. In that case, I, Nahima, give you permission to leave. You have my blessing, princess, but do not keep me waiting for too long. Days will seem long without you. Before the impenetrable eyes of the fairy who was observing the scene, the two girls... Oh, she did not go away. Okay, the two girls threw themselves into each other's arms. While the servant was delighted by her mistress' display of the affection, the princess was already projecting herself before this unknown prince who was waiting for her somewhere, the prince she was need to impress. Oh, oh. Oh, now that I think I might have strayed to a route that I wanted to avoid the most. I don't know how many endings there are in this game, but I do know there is like two romanceable girls, and yeah. Oh boy. 
Unless, who knows? I think maybe it's another loop. The young Moore stopped the steering cameras with a comforting face. Her thoughts wandering elsewhere, her blood boiling in her veins. Eager, she grabs the rod and sharply hit the ground, a chest promptly materialized in front of her amazed eyes. Oh, wait, isn't... Ah, oh, we can go there now. Kiona hastens to open her wardrobe in order to gather her most shining dresses, as well as her most expensive pieces of jewelry. Um, naively, she assumed that her party was to go all out to be sure to dazzle the Lord she would visit. Oh. I'm telling you, it would not work. It was therefore with certain vanity that she was surreptitiously admiring herself in the mirror each time she tried on an outfit or an accessory before carefully putting it in the chest. <sighs> Although the dresses granted by her father were poisoned gifts. Eternal reminders of the morbid fate which was threatening her, she could not help but find them to her liking. She could not help but tell herself that it would be such a waste to throw them away. In a matter of minutes, the magic chest got filled and the knight adva advancing, it appeared to the prince that it was high time to leave the palace. Kiona donned the donkey skin with a bit of disgust, then turned to her friend and the fairy. Oh, now that I think about it, I forgot about something. Yeah. Ah, uh, we are... We unlocked this at the end of the last one. I was supposed to read this. Totally going to interrupt the story with that now. Komore is a Breton variation of Bluebird. I have no clue what that is. Told by Emile Sauvestre in the Breton Harf, 1844. Princess... Trifinia is suddenly proposed by the prince of the neighboring country, the fearsome Komor, who threatens to divide her father's lands if she ever refuses. Eh? Okay. Because he is rumored to be a bloodthirsty man with a, a compromised reputation, since his four previous wives all met an untimely death, the king refused to let him have his daughter, and the two kingdoms are on the brink of war. To convince Trifinia to save the dances from impending slaughter, Saint Veltas leaves a silver ring with peculiar properties with her. If Komor were to contemplate killing her, the ring would immediately change color. From a milky white, it would turn raven black. The raven ring, Bag de Curbeau, in French. Very thanks, French. Obviously here. <laughs> of someone who does not speak French at all. Istus, a jewel of ill men that warns it were of the dangerous line ahead. Okay, I mean, that's a pretty freaking useful ring. Oh yeah, in our chest we have gallery, that's true. Donkey skin. <laughs> I must go wish me luck. Oh, one moment, Angel. I still have to cast a spell. Let me see. With a gesture as deft as the previous ones, Medea traced some impenetrable symbols while mumbling. A thin veil then covered the princess from head to toe, making her entirely transparent. There you are. Invisible. Be discreet nonetheless, for you are not immaterial. You would only need to make contact with a guard to arouse his suspicion. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. One last piece of advice, if I may. It is very dark outside and it would seem wiser to me to steal a torch before diving to the unknown. Otherwise you will not see further than the tip of your nose. Will you make that torch invisible as well? <laughs> the torch will be momentarily invisible too. <laughs> oh my god, she predicted my question. Should you place it under this magic veil? But know that the spell will end as soon as you put a foot outside the palace. I'm deeply grateful for everything you are doing for me. Well, I'm your godmother after all. I shall leave at once. I promise my exile will be short, Nahima. Be careful, princess! 
With these brief farewells, Kiona vanished in the castle's corridors under the defeated look of her servant. Uh, still disappointed and worried, she claim, exclaimed in a sigh. Will I ever see her again? <laughs> the fairy who had stayed all the silent during the embrass tried to comfort her and put a kind hand on her shoulder. There, there, do not cry. I know I should not, but I have a bad feeling about this. As if nothing will ever be the same again. You are so powerful. Can you see the future? Can you tell me if everything is going to be okay? The limbo creature was deep in thought for a moment before quietly answering. If my fair dies right, I think the princess is not going to get very far. Oh boy. Oh boy. Dude, those are not good words. <laughs> this is going to be a bad ending. So bad of an ending. A few... Uh, a few meters from there, Kiona was stealthily sneaking through the castle's corridors. The fine stealthily. Because... Of the upcoming wedding ceremony planned by the king, the retainers were bustling in every direction and moving forward without bumping into one of them it was more difficult than Kiona had imagined. Following her godmother's advice, she stopped for a few and to unhook a torch from its stand. Suddenly, there was a metallic clinking behind her back. Breath taken, the princess rushed to conceal the torch under her invisibility veil and lit against a pillar. Soon enough, a guard who was patrolling appeared, with dark circles under the eyes. He inspected his surroundings while whistling. To her great horror, he halted a mere centimeters away from the young woman. Whoa. Fancy that! I would have thought that there was a torch in this spot. I'm pretty sure I saw one earlier when took my tour. How strange! The guard stressed, scratched his head before shrugging with resignation. I bet Brad Gaetan is just stealing again. I'd warn the boy that I would come denounce him in the slightest repeat offense. I've been way too patient with him. Kiona heard him grumble out loud as he was continuing on his way. This work is so tedious as it is. I really don't need to have a family's death on my conscience. I know well that his mother is sick, but this is going too far. Relieved, the princess caught her breath and dashed forward to a back door Nahima had indicated earlier. It was a pathway used by returners to avoid crossing the great port coolies and save time. Following the hidden staircase, she found herself outside as the steps led straight into the moat. Luckily for her, a tiny robot was also tied with staked nearby and all she had to do was to use it to cross the stretch of water still equipped with her torch. Well, it was easier than I thought, she exclaimed while looking back. Point du jour. Another Breton tale told by folklorist Paul Sebilo in Folk Tales from High Brittany, 1880. Point du jour is a refreshing variant of Little Tump. No clue. The, uh, the eponymous protagonist does not have six brothers, but only two sisters, who are favored by her father. A widow man who indulges in all their whims, but does not hesitate to hit him. Unhappy with this situation, the little boy goes into a forest on his own initiative in the hope of finding better luck elsewhere. After helping several animals along the way, he reaches the ogre's dwelling and asks for hospitality. He's fattened there for days until the latter finally decides to eat him. Nah. Thanks to the guidance of the animals he saved in the forest, Elder Pondujo nonetheless managed to escape from the ogre by leaping into a magical well that transports him into another world. There he meets once again with all the animals. They give him a talisman that grants any wish before he takes the road back to his father's house. 
Point du jour is also an old French expression referring to daybreak. Oh. But why would you go back to this, the father's house? Oh, I would not. Certainly. At night the castle appeared to be surrounded by dark depths and looked almost ghostly. Conscious that her veil of invisibility had just worn away and that she was now plainly visible to the guards patrolling on the rampart walk, Kion decided that it would be wiser to cut across the forest to be sure she would not draw attention. She impulsively ventured deep into the woods, torch in hand. Okay, I understand now why we are, we are told about the story with the woods. The princess was unaccustomed to walking outside, even less so in such a inhospitable surroundings. She was progressing with difficulty as she sometimes had to push branches to keep moving, sometimes to climb lar large rocks or take a detour so that she would not fall into a hole. Dirt disgusted her yet she still had to touch the moss ridden trunks and brambles which were standing in her way. Making faces the whole time, Kiona root deep down, not being able to ask Nahima to escort her. Surely she could have guided her and gotten dirty in her place. Meh. <laughs> if the donkey skin was keeping her warm enough, it was still rather long and always got caught in some twigs, which forced the young woman to extricate herself several times in a row. It was really terrifying in itself to end up in the forest for all alone, at the mercy of the untimely hooting of nocturnal birds. And did not fail to mumble and curse to exercise the fear that was slowly crawling inside of her. Stupid dolls, you are hurting my ears. Holes are open, okay. No sooner had Kiona pronounced this pueril reproach than she tripped on the root and fell flat on her face on the damp ground. Heh. Ugh. A shame she picked herself up while dusting the dead leaves, stuck on her skin and continued on her route. The flickering flame barely allowed her to discern where her feet were taking her and she was no longer very sure of her exact position. I was right to listen to my godmother's advice. What would I have done without light? As the cold and fatigue were making her feeble, the young woman lost her balance several times. With each fall, her morale diminished and she was soon brought to tears. If someone could see me, what would they think? What a fine princess I am! As she was vainly trying to keep her composure, Kiona eventually slipped and fell into a swamp. Oh my god. The torch which had followed her in the fall died the moment it reached the muddy water, plunging her surroundings to total darkness. I wish you packed another torch into that chest now, huh? The young woman almost gave up, but... Flashed to finger, she extracted herself from the boot. Filthy, stinking, pathetic, spread out among the leaves. She did not know what to do anymore. It was a dark and terrible night. All around she could see menacing trees and eerie bushes where some lost souls or wild beasts were surely hiding. The confidence she had tried to preserve had completely vanished along with her only source of light. Kiona wept while attempting to blindly move forward, but to no avail, completely disoriented, she did not recognize anything anymore. She could not even tell where she came from or where she had to go. That was a terrible idea. Why did I think it would be right? Freak. Right to cut the forest. And why did I reject Nakima? Cursed be my pride. Actually, rejecting Nakima was like still the correct choice. Of all the things she's done, that was the most thought out thing, to be honest. Whatever. Shivering from cold and fear, the princess pulled herself on a big branch in order to take shelter from the beasts that were roaming in the woods and decided it to wait for daylight. What beasts? I hope that I'm not going to run to a bear or a boar or else it'll be the end of my brief adventure. I understand being afraid of running the boar uh, into a bear, uh, yeah, into a bear, but boar avoidable. Then again, maybe, oh yeah, with for her it would be a problem, I guess. With the boars, you just need to like jump to the side at the correct timing, or just climb a tree and you are good to go. Bear for who? I don't know. Just 
run like crazy and hope you won't run into... It won't catch up. <laughs> or as far as I'm concerned, run down uh, downhill with the bears. Supposedly they are better with running uh, uphill, so run downhill basically. Anyway, at least that's what I was taught. Completely exhausted, she lost consciousness. A new file. Okay, let's let's read the new file at least, and we'll cut it for today. Senerentola. It is in the first you. It is in the first European fairy tale collection, The Tale of Tales, or Pentamo, Pentamerone, from writer Giambattista Basile. 1634-1636. Wow. 17th century. Damn. That you can find one of the first written versions of Cinderella. A rather surprising version. At that, as there are not one but two different stepmothers. Ooh! Because she's terrified by the first one, a slim but inoffensive woman, the heroine named Zezola. Oh my god! What a name! Is charmed by the promises of her tutor. She. Uh, sorry, the Carmosina, who first take her place. The both of them consequently orchestrate an unfortunate accident to break her neck. What? Zodan moves heaven and earth to convince her father to wed her tutor. Once married, the Carmosina forgets her promises little by little and keeps the best tra treatments for her six daughters who are hidden up to the point to relegating Zozola to the dirty work. This is how she earns the nickname Senerentola that could be translated as Ashkat. Chate des Kendres in French. Perfect French, as always. Hmm. I guess another interesting story from the past. Ah, uh, okay. So, basically, we've managed to run away? For also, at this point, I would not be surprised if someone found out to be fair, given the fact that I guess Nahima would be the uh, the first person to uh, go into Kiona's room and so on in the morning, right? I guess in the very morning she would have to alert. She would have to alert. Uh, I don't know Kiona's parents or whoever. Cure parents, I say, basically the king, or maybe the guards, or whatever. I mean, she would have to do that anyway. I mean, the princess is not there. Kiona, Kiona is not there, so Nahima is basically the first person to be questioned, I guess. Dude, I wonder if she, if Nahima is going to have another tough situation. Even for, well... Did she overdo it previously with the previous ending? Maybe a little bit. I mean, she really went far with what she's done afterwards, but... Probably too far even. Will it be a repeat? Who knows? Maybe. For now, for we are out of the castle. I don't know how far. Uh, to be fair, Medea did say that the princess will now go that far. I wonder if that means there's a bad end or... I know, they are bordering close with another country. Or another kingdom, and she'll be there, or something like that. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, let's end for today. We'll continue tomorrow. Uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.